Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land, please. The Binding of Isaac at Breath Plus. We're doing really, really, really well on dailies, and we get to be the exalted one. Kane, with the magic number for damage. Dancing with the devil in the pale moonlight. I don't think that's what Jack Nicholson meant. Why not? I mean, for many reasons, <clears throat> why not? But mostly we have the lockpick to begin with. Yo. This is an incredible start. Keep in mind, it's very cursed to have a run that goes to Shoal. Why is it very cursed? Oh, it almost worked. It's very cursed because a, a run that goes to Shoal means that the best way to get maximum points, unfortunately, is to go to Void. Excuse me, my son, would you like to leave the room? I don't cats are the psychology of a cat. You know, I've had them basically my entire life. It, it still befuddles me to this day. Before I started the video, Ruka was in my office just staring. And we opened that for exploration bonus, by the way. Just staring at the door. So I opened the door, and he looked at me like, oh, like offended. Like, oh, you want me to leave? Okay, fine. And I start the video within the first minute. He's like, no, you're right. I don't want to be here. I'm like, Fair enough, you know. I was thinking the other day, you know, I'm running low on anecdotes from my life. I have never uh, said in a YouTube video before. And one struck me the other day when I was in the shower that reminds me of the, just that it echoes from a, a morale, no, a moral, there we go, perspective. That exact situation. Give me a spirit heart, please. Even better. Still worth taking. We're going to go back and get that tinted rock as well. Um, even, you know, I, I, I talk about this now and then that, you know, my communication style, I like to be literal. I like to be, you know, flowery with my language or, or to have some flair with it as well, you know, to, to make it uh, a little poetic sometimes, to say things in an overly obtuse way that, you know, conveys a similar meaning but, you know, with a little bit more character to it. But when I'm communicating, like, instructions or something like that, I want it to be as clear as possible. I want it to be, like, robotic. You know, move to this point, execute this task, move to this point, execute this task. And I, even as a, as a child, I was like that. Although probably to a little bit of a lesser extent, admittedly. And I expected other people to be that too, or be like that. So I remember in second grade, it was probably third grade, not that it matters, but um, one of my friends was like, yo, I'm going to join the cross country club. What's cross country? I don't know if it's a colonial ooh, colloquialism. Coincidentally, my favorite category of Jeopardy answers. Um, we will definitely get that. We don't need it immediately, but we want to make sure we're not leaving without it. Mark that on a post-it note. Um, and, you know, cross-country is basically like, you know, three lunches a week. Instead of immediately eating lunch and then having recess, you go run like, I don't know, probably like two or three kilometers because we were pretty young. And then uh, you go in and you come back and you eat lunch. So I was like, you know what, that sounds fun. I'm eight. What do I know about, you know, the way that I want to experience lunches? You're trying stuff out. Maybe running is something that's going to be good for me. Well, I mean, obviously it's going to be good for you, but you get the idea. So I go with my friend across country, <clears throat> and I remember the teacher was, like, lecturing us outside. I'm not going to step on it yet. Just don't forget about it. And she was like, you know, I'm going to work you guys hard. You know, if you uh, stick with this club, you're going to become an amazing runner. If you don't stick with this club, like if you got any reservations about it, you might as well just leave right now. And I said, well, you know what? Fair enough. And I just like turned around and walked away. And I realize now that she was just trying to be motivating. I still, I have to point out that like, to this day, I kind of think that I was in the right. You know, it... She was tackling it, uh, tackling it from this perspective, uh, I guess we would want both. That it was like, uh, it was like the military. Hold on. 
I haven't finished this story yet. We should have popped that in the other room, but whatever. We still want to take the damage bonus for this. Um, she was coming at it from the perspective that it was like the military. So she, I, I think she was trying to be motivating when she said, you know, if you have any reservations about, you know, this club at all, you might as well just leave right now. But I took it uh, extremely literally and was like, you know what? I, I just kind of joined because my friend was here. And I thought maybe it might be nice to get some exercise. And I don't know, I'm eight years old. Maybe I joined cross country and it ends up being my origin story for becoming like, a, you know, an Olympian. Probably not a gold medal winner. I mean, you know, I don't think I have the physiology to be a, a long distance runner of, you know, that kind of pace. But simultaneously, I, you never know, right? And then later... Uh, you know, the, the teacher came and talked to me, and she clapped, and she handed me a crisp $100 bill, and that teacher's name? Edward Einstein. So, sorry, my voice is, uh, is warming up again. A little early over here. I, I, my good sleep schedule had been slipping away for a couple days, and it, whenever, oh, a YouTuber complains about their sleep schedule. I want you to know there's a subtext. And the subtext is my sleep schedule is getting screwed up because I have no obligations to be awake. <laughs> it's always like it's it's a privileged thing to be like, my sleep schedule is busted. Your sleep schedule is busted. Because, you know, he, he ain't got a job where you got to be there at 9 a.m. Or, you know, people will frown upon you. Uh, unless you stream early in the morning. Which is fair. One of these days, we're going to get a crawl space, man. I can feel it. Uh, your, your sleep schedule's busted because you don't have a kid. You know, it's going to wake you up at uh, 5 a.m. Or something like that. My sleep schedule started to get messed up because... Uh, my cats would freak out like two and a half hours before I was supposed to wake up. And then when my alarm went off, I was like, screw that. Yeah, I'm not ready. But I'm happy to say it's it's quite early on my end today. It's 9.47 a.m. when I'm recording this. And I'm trying to, I really am committed to keeping this, you know, morning aesthetic going. We will absolutely take little Chad here. This run's going very well. I think I'm, I'm begrudgingly, you know, in my... Very, very early 30s, you know, still the first month of me being 30 years old. The theme for me so far, and I, I imagine it's different for everybody, but has been kind of like, then again, I can't stress enough how early it is, but has been like almost echoing the way that I lived between the ages of like 10 and 18, you know, my pre-college existence. In college, I think I mind flooded myself into believing that I was actually a night owl. I don't know if I actually am a night person. I think I'm a, 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 a sneaky morning person. Or at least I'm becoming one as I get older. You know, I'm starting to think I didn't actually like uh, the nighttime. I just had trouble sleeping and liked the internet. And this led to me staying up until 2 in the morning when... You know, I actually feel better when I wake up. You know, obviously, like, waking up at 8.30 is not early. That's like... Well, let me put it this way. My parents live in Eastern Time. And uh, I got a message from my mom yesterday. Now, the message said, Hey, do you have time for a quick phone call tonight? First off, Mom... It just... And it's not your fault at all. It's my fault. But clearly, I need to work on my communication skills. If my mom texts me and is like, Do you have time... Tonight to talk. I'm busy, but I'm not that busy. You know, you shouldn't have to be like, you know, can I please have some of your privileged time? All of this time belongs to you. As a result of, uh, you know, the conception and all that. Spirit heart? No spirit heart. Uh, I guess we'll just use the shovel on the next floor. We're just kind of floating on right now. Uh, and I'll use a bomb here. We do want to go to the secret room. I feel like we're getting close to popping off. Oh, jeez. 
but you know that message arrived at noon but because of the way i use my phone which is ignoring it as much as possible it probably led to the message being like that in the first place uh i didn't see it until like 10 30 p.m so i messaged my mom and i said hey mom sorry i didn't get this until just now would today work for you which is tomorrow her time because she's uh, three hours ahead and then she w was like yeah that's fine we'll call you tonight so that w what's the point of this very pedestrian story well i want to point out when people get up early my mom sent me that text that said sure we'll call you tonight at 1 40 a.m my time which means is 4.40 a.m. her time. My mom is not a night owl. That means she woke up at 4.40 a.m. That's like morning radio show host time to wake up. It's when you work the 6 to 9 a.m. shift at, you know, KLAX. That's the airport code for Los Angeles. But, you know, if you just... <laughs> If you're gonna make a joke about a radio station's symbol, it has to start with a K. It's just the way it is. Anyway. So that's when people who actually wake up early can wake up. And that's like... My mom is under no obligation to wake up at that time. She does it, I don't know. I don't disagree with her, to be fair. But I think she does it out of inertia. You know, a lifetime of waking up early five days a week because you have to work means you'd rather wake up early seven days a week so on the five days a week that you have to be up early you're not you know incredibly tired and disproportionately groggy and then your your whole life you're just like now okay i'm waking up at 5 a.m which is cool you know i went to iceland once so i know what it's like to be up before the sun several hours before the sun in some cases So that was one of those situations we would have rather had meat in there. But um, yeah, it, it, so that's that's my uh, that's been the the start of my 30s, and who knows, you know, the start of my 20s is very different from the end of my 20s. You know, it, I turned 20 my third year in college. It's like the exact intersection of like. It's the, the inflection point between, like, teenage life and adult life. It's like, hey, I'm in a relatively consequence-free environment right now, but in, like, a year and a half, I'm going to be a normal human being. You know, it's an interesting time. With your 30, things seem a little bit more stable. But I've been, and I haven't really finished my point here, but I've been living more like, uh, more like I'm, you know, in my younger days, even. Going to bed a little earlier, reading a lot. It feels nice, to be honest. And I'm being unapologetic for it. I kind of like, I don't know about you. I like the morning. I'm starting to like the morning more than the night. And I say this as a person who straddled the line between night and morning person over the course of my existence. I feel like when you stay up late, well, first off, now, I've also reached the point where, you know, my wife, she would prefer probably to stay up like an hour to an hour and a half later than the, the time that I go to bed, but sometimes she'll be having these night person conversations with me, and it'll be like 12.30, and I have to very rudely be like, I gotta stop you right there. You're asking me like very real wakeful questions questions that warrant you know being in a situation where you give them their attention and i can't give you that right now because my brain is out of fuel so if the question's important i'm gonna need to revisit it in the morning and i apologize for that but simultaneously the brain is just is done what i need to do now is put on an audio book about you know the middle ages conk out for seven or eight hours and get back to you but i i feel like um when i was a kid you know being a night owl was cool because it was like i was getting away with something it's like oh my parents would prefer if i wasn't staying up until three in the morning watching whatever movie happens to be on tbs but what they don't know won't hurt them as an adult 
And I don't think this is true, and I don't think it's true for everybody. But being a night owl just felt like I was robbing myself of a morning, you know? It would, if I'm awake at 3 a.m., all I could think of was like, man, I'm, I'm really robbing my... Oh, we're guppy. We win. We're robbing ourselves, or I'm robbing myself, I should say, of that, like, beautiful 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. window. Because, you know, you could say, well, you could just wake up after... You know, six hours of sleep. People do it every single day. Oh, uh, yeah. Why don't I just wake up after six hours of sleep and after that I'll just go, uh, cure cancer. As long as we're talking about things that are miracles. <laughs> if I'm in control of my own alarm clock, I'm probably not going to wake up after six hours of sleep is what it, where I'm going with this, what I'm trying to say. So it was like, uh, it was illicit. To be staying up late. And illicit was good when I was, you know, 15. Now that I'm older, I'm like, ah, it's unbecoming. When you wake up early, it's like when you work out or something like that. Or when you get a, assigned a project at school and you finish it. Or you, get, you at least get started in like the first day that it's assigned. It's not like you're getting away with something. It's quite the opposite. It's like you're responsibly handling things. Like I feel good. It's... Not even 10 a.m. yet. We have a, a meeting at the bank at noon. And like two years ago, I would have woken up at like 11.35. Brush my teeth, hop on the train, go to the bank. Now I'm like, dude, I can get like a third of a work day in, eat a good break. It feels nice. And I got to, you know who I've got to give a little bit of credit for helping me out in this transition is Bear Taffy. A year younger than myself. Everybody else, and I, I've aired this grievance publicly on the show before. Not everybody else. A couple of people on the NLSS. I feel like whenever I... And it's, it's part of a recurring joke. I'm not going to be too mad about it. Sorry, I had a little burp there. I wanted to hide as much as possible. They make fun of me for being proud of things that are emblematic of an adult life. But Bear Taffy is a year younger than me, and he's like, yo, bro, check it out. I've been waking up at like 7 a.m. for the past year, and low-key, it kind of rules. And I was like, you know what, if Bear Taffy has the courage to tumble headlong into this responsible kind of existence, maybe I should try it out as well, and I've been enjoying it so far. So, you know, I was mentioning my sleep schedule. It was getting a little busted. Last night, I ate a very spicy curry. <laughs> Not on purpose. I mean, I ordered the curry on purpose, but it wasn't my intention to use it as a biological alarm clock, but enough said. Here I am. It was delicious. Thank you for asking. Um, take those options. I don't think we take anything else. This is... We're now in a... I wouldn't call it the danger zone at all. It's whatever the opposite of the danger zone is. Um, the safe zone? The auto zone? I don't know. We are going to make it to boss rush. Uh, even though we're very slightly behind schedule. Um, that's because we've been exploring basically everything. It, I mean, it's possible to take neither of these, but sure. The real problem right now is the Delirium fight, but I think even still, our Delirium fight prospects are pretty good. And I don't want to be the guy who skips out on the Delirium fight, is the thing. So I'm willing to, uh... I'm willing to take a few extra points to put a logical kind of, like, end cap on a run. And I'm glad, because, I, you know, I was getting, I wouldn't say desperate, but I was willing to compromise my own morals a couple of runs ago when we were going to Delirium. I was like, maybe we'll alt F4. Or just quit the run or whatever it is to get the maximum points. But then, the run ended up being so unbelievably good that we just killed Delirium easily. Dude, I'm going to need you to, like, seriously pay out or give up. Thank you. The Locust of Famine just alone is fine. Um, but anyway, I was willing to compromise my... My deep-seated Isaac morals in a moment of weakness, and I'm embarrassed to admit it. But then, you know, they gave us that D-Infinity run that turned out to be soy milk, rate of fire, and polyphemus level damage. 
we crushed Delirium, and I was like, you know what? I'm glad we didn't go back on our principles. I'm glad we toughed it out. Um, we don't really want... Maybe we do actually want Book of Shadows now that I think about it. I mean, I literally gave it no thought whatsoever at first. It was just like, we don't want this. Small rock, please. We don't have a ton of time. Why Book of Shadows? M mostly for the difficult fights, you know, like... I mean, first off, we have Boss Rush, but also, uh... You know, Delirium and Hush, it will be advantageous. I would love to get, uh... Well, something useful. Humbling Bundle is fine. Oh, I mean, it's better than fine, it's, it's excellent, but... This wasn't really what I wanted. I wanted, uh, like, AAA battery, 9-volt, etc. Life goes on. Alright. I don't even know what I want right now. Stats would be nice. Uh, I will take advantage of a Krampus fight. Should I? I will, yeah. One HP is free right now, so we're actually happy to have Gimpy. It's free because we want this permanent Polaroid invincibility. Yikes. Um, so we took Dead Tooth. An item that I don't think is worth very much at all. So a real, uh, it's going to be a test for us. If we can up, well, actually, I, did I get hit there? I may have. What I'm looking at right now is, am I able to kill waves fast enough to have, like, an unlimited Book of Shadows charge? And honestly, it's hard to tell because of uh, freaking halitosis here. Supercalifragilistic freaking halitosis. Want to see my vulnerability, but I've got bad breath hypnosis. See, I told you the brain still works. <laughs> Verbally speaking. With with Isaac mechanics and Slay the Spire uh, strategies, perhaps not. But verbally, the, the flesh is still strong. But that's alright. Everybody watching is asleep probably by this point. Anyway, we're 20 minutes in. Well, much like our last, uh, our last run that went to Shoal or the Cathedral, I can't remember, um, we're not gonna have any trouble making the Hush fight. Are we gonna have any trouble defeating Hush? Well, you know, it's a bit of a galaxy brain take. But I think Fruitcake is actually maybe one of the items that helps us out the most there. Is we're, you know, we don't have Holy Light. Oh, we'll definitely take Sad Onion. We don't have Holy Light, but we have Holy Light on occasion. And that alone is, uh... Enough to give me a little bit more confidence, especially as our rate of fire rises here. You're good. Yeah, I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. Keep it. It's yours. At this point, we're, we have a rich life, Dark Bum. It's like trying to pay for dinner in a room full of relatives. No, I couldn't possibly. You take it, etc. So. But yeah, I know. I'm just trying to throw it out there, you know? I feel like, you know, and this is a vulnerable moment for me. Part of the spirit of my 20s was looking back at my, uh, Puberty. well, my life up to that point, which was very small, obviously, and being like, you know, in my 20s, it's a chance to, I wouldn't say reinvent, but a chance to look at the stuff that you've done and the, the, the way that you've behaved in your life up to this point and be like, is this what I really want for myself? And I think to some extent, I was like, hey, I've been living this pedestrian life you know i've been living this quiet life maybe i should you know take more chances uh be more thank you uh be a little bit more reckless because i was the kind of kid that you know even at age 10 i took like swimming lessons and i was like i don't want to jump into the pool because what if i drown and my parents were like that's ridiculous you know, you know how to swim. And I was like, yeah, but I ain't ever jumped into the pool before. So I don't... <clears throat> pardon me. I don't know 
if maybe I'll just sink to the bottom. And they had to, like, appeal to my inner nerd. Okay, we're fine. And they were like, if you jump into the pool, we'll get you a subscription in to Nintendo Power. And I was like, let's do it. Fair and unbiased reviews provided by a journalistic entity partnered with the publisher. What could go wrong? <clears throat> anyway, so in my 20s, I was like, ah, let's get a little bit more reckless. And then I'm doing, like, exactly the same thing in my 30s here. I'm going, like, maybe I was dumb in my 20s. I think this is a natural evolution of human life. And you could do this when you turn, you know, 23, by the way. I guess you don't have to wait for the even numbers. But, you know, it's a little bit, uh, there's some sentimentality, I suppose. And I'm like, you know, maybe, maybe Ryan 10 to 17 was smarter or had it more figured out than Ryan, you know, 21 to 25. I don't know. Yeah, I'll take a little brim. I don't really, you don't need to give me those consumables. That's fine. But we'll figure it out. Maybe when I'm 40, I'll be like, nah, dude, Ryan that was 20 had it figured out. Hey, all my friends from college. Let's get back to that lifestyle that we had of uh, consuming too many adult beverages like four times a week. Waking up after five hours of sleep, going to class. Well, what was it that uh, 2018 Poet Laureate Asher Roth said? I forget. It was something that pass out at 3, wake up at 10, go out to eat, do it again. Well, I'm just going to say, we went to different colleges. There were no brunch places nearby. I didn't go to NYU, okay, Asher Roth? I don't know if you did either. I mean, are you still around? Are you doing... Does anybody even know who Asher Roth is? Am I just... <laughs> Am I talking to myself? Am I the only person who remembers the, the 14 minutes where he was the most popular young rapper in America? Well, we could have explored more, but I'm not really living that daily life. I'm happy to maximize my points through fun endeavors. Not so interested in doing so, you know, when it requires fighting a bunch of rooms for no reason except uh, a certain misplaced sense of duty. And I think our score is going to be fine today. I mean, it's a very easy daily. Um, I don't think we take any item here, to be honest. It's a full health? Yeah. Okay, two luck upgrades is nice. Yeah, I don't think, uh, I mean, we have nothing to worry about from my perspective. On today's daily. We, we have delirium to worry about. Uh, and that's very, very fair. But apart from that, it, it should be, uh, easy is maybe not the right word, but it should be safe. You know, to beat delirium... Sadly, most of the time, you gotta have a, you know, if you're gonna beat him comfortably, you gotta have, like, an actual 10 out of 10. At least, like, a 9 out of 10 run. I mean, because no run is truly perfect. I wouldn't want to take away the means for the run to have something to, you know, strive for. <laughs> There's, like, a few bands, and, you know, while we're on this topic that I have shoehorned into this video. There's a few bands I'm pretty sure I hallucinated. And I, I'm the only person on Earth that remembers them. Does anyone on Earth share the memory that I have of a pop star named Mika? From roughly the year 2007. He had a song called Grace Kelly and the prevailing theme of the song is that his voice goes very, very high. And then I'm, I'm obviously, I, we don't sing in the same register, which sucks for one of us, but, um, 
That's come up like two or three times in conversation in the past year. And everybody that I've talked about it with has been like, I'm not sure that I remember that song. And then I sing it and they go, no, I don't remember that song. And then I pull it up on YouTube and they go, oh, I heard that once in a body shop. Not an auto body shop. I'm talking about a the body shop. They're called essential oils. Look them up, sweetheart. <laughs> not in the textbook, though, because they're not in there. But anyway, um, another one is uh, a British artist by the name of Jamie T. It's just, I, I, and again, I'm not sure if it's the way that, uh, you know, it, it, when I was in university, I experienced music in like four month bursts. You know, I would be like, from May to August, I would hear the radio against my will. And then, uh,. I wouldn't hear it again until December, so I would catch all those December songs. And I'd be like, what, Big Girls Don't Cry by Fergie's not popular anymore? Could have fooled me. Um, and then I would hear it again, you know, for a week during spring break, and then that was it. You know, that was the end of my uh, radio experience on an annual basis, so... What? Really? I can't believe we just walked into the delirium fight. In a way, it's good. And remember, you don't get any points for fighting delirium, so... Really, the, the only thing I can say here is that... At least by finishing this fight early... Our time bonus won't diminish, and our damage bonus won't be unnecessarily high from fighting uh, non-compulsory enemies. But for sure, I was hoping to not fight delirium first. And instead be able to... Uh, get the maximum amount of items from the other rooms to maximize our chances of winning the delirium fight to begin with. However, taking items does cause us a negative point penalty as well. So, um, I don't I don't think this is a win for us, but I will absolutely leave after this because we've, we've done all the stuff that has to be done. Except for getting an exploration bonus, but I mean, come on. Are you crazy? I just walked over here. I'm just trying to figure out if I live in the Berenstein Bears universe. Or the Berenstain Bears universe. Does anybody remember Jamie T? Not Pusha T. That's a different and far superior hip hop artist. Alright. Doom? I'm actually like offended at my score here. I guess we didn't really do our due diligence, but still. Well, 154. I can't really complain. It's still decent. For now, though, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. And, of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!